Hello, so we are back. And finally I did it. I bought our oscilloscope. Now, before we start, yeah, let's be clear. This is not advertised. I really don't care if you buy it or from where you buy it. Yeah, this is not advertised. But I was following this particular oscilloscope for a while. And uh, I found a discounted on Amazon and I bought it. 200 megahertz oscilloscope. Now, I will leave a link in the description if you are looking to buy. Uh, I bought it from, uh, from Amazon, to be honest, because uh, it's discounted right now. Uh, my advice, yeah, uh, buy only the S versions because it comes with, uh, with a signal generator. And uh, the cheapest one, I mean, till now, the one which is, was worth the money was this one, 100 megahertz, yeah? But the problem is between this one and the 200 megahertz one, which is this, is like 10 pounds difference. I mean, for 10 pounds, uh, I mean, it's, you know, just better to get the, you can see you, you purchase the item, you, you can get the 200 megahertz one for 10 pounds. That's what I mean. Okay. Now let's uh, dig in into this oscilloscope which is absolutely beautiful. It's like a, you know, like a Lamborghini car, but portable, 200 megahertz, yeah? Good. One thing, why I, buy, why I bought this, yeah? That's the question. It's because on the last period of time, I have so many laptops with dead chipsets. Now the oscilloscope is really a good tool to find out if your chipset is alive. And it's very easy. All you have to do is to check the BIOS chip, yeah? So let's, uh, let's check together. Usually, the chipset, a good chipset, a live chipset, is reading the BIOS. It's, it's sending the BIOS to the EC chip, yeah? In case, let's say, you unplug the battery or the BIOS battery. Or uh, it's comparing the data from the BIOS chip to the EC chip. So always it's a communication between the BIOS and the AC chip using the chipset. Of course, it's not a rule. I mean, you can have a dead chipset and also, you know, it's reading the BIOS. But usually, a dead chipset, it will not read the BIOS, yeah? So let's just, uh, let's make a test, a quick test. We have the board from yesterday. Remember the laptop from yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have the oscilloscope. Let me zoom a little bit. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay. What I will do, we're going to follow the BIOS chip. Okay. Good. The BIOS chip is here. You can see it. Okay. Let me zoom it more. Huh? Or not. Maybe I can. Yeah. I will, I will stick the ground. And what I will do, because the communication with the BIOS is not like a continuous uh, communication. It will read the BIOS and that's all in the beginning. So you can stick the probe basically on any pin from the BIOS and you should see some communication. So I'm plugging the charger. Plug in the charger. So follow the, follow the oscilloscope. You can see? Yeah. And it will be one more time. No, that's all. Okay. Now if I get another pin... Because you have a lot of you have data, you have clock, you have you can check basically on any pin from the BIOS, nearly on any pin. Good. So I'm 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 plugging the power back. Let's follow. Yeah, you can see it is communication between the the chipset and the BIOS. Actually, the chipset it is reading the BIOS on this case. Also, you can use the tri uh, the trigger function, and you can grab a single. Uh, but you have to be careful because look, you can see it's red. Basically, when you touch with the uh, with with the uh, with the USB charger, the charging port, it will get triggered. So let me do it. Let me just plug it a little bit. Good. Now let's press play. And now let's plug fully the charging port. And you can see he grabbed the he grabbed the communication. The oscilloscope is very sensitive. We can connect it to ground, going close to the to the switching power supply, which is working. You can see you can see the signal uh, 
on the screen. So this one is working, this one is working. Okay, one thing, what you will remember what Sorin said. You remember what Sorin said? Use a linear power supply. I mean, on my case here, I'm using a USB-C, which is a switching power supply. It's a USB-C. I'm not using the power supply from the screen. But the reason why I'm using a power switch, a linear power supply, is because if you try with oscilloscope to check, let's say, a power rail with, uh, with the oscilloscope, and you can see here we have two fuses. You see those two? So here are like 15 volts. You can check with the multimeter anyway. But the DC current, like in a, using a switching power supply, it looks like this. So usually it should look like a line, right? But check here, yeah? So that's the signal from uh, a switching power supply. And if I try on a linear power supply, uh, you'll be surprised, yeah? So let's check together. So that's my power supply, which is on the screen, ground. Ah, it's looking better. Not a lot better, but enough, yeah? You still have some noise, but definitely better compared with a switching power supply. I'm just saying, you know, regarding the, regarding the, the switching power supplies. Yeah, otherwise you can uh, you can check a lot of things on the motherboard and also you'll find out uh, yeah with oscilloscope you can find out actually what the capacitor are doing you will see a difference if you remove a capacitor on the signal uh, on the signal let me plug the power and also you can check uh, all kind of signals it is not working it is working yeah yeah i mean the usb c ports and actually you can check the signals on uh, on every power supply and try to figure it out if you have any problem especially replacing mosfets replacing mosfets uh, that's the best way to figure it out if you have uh, you have a dead driver or not checking the 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 gate signal yeah you check on the gate to see if you have any actually switching from the driver or you have DC. You're gonna see this oscilloscope on uh, my next videos. But before that, before that, what we are doing usually, huh? I mean, th this is nice. I mean, you can check them. The specification are crazy, are insane on this oscilloscope. I don't think you are on video to hear about the specification. What do we have here more? You have the charging ports, USB-C, and you have the, the signal, uh, uh, you have the, the calibration uh, signal. So you can calibrate your, uh, your oscilloscope. What you have here, you have uh, A, B, and you have the generator. Yeah, generator is good. You'll see, especially when you're fixing like things with input, like audio amplifiers like uh, many things you'll need it you'll need a signal generator now another things you i liked is has uh, actually this has a multimeter inside and it's a it's a very good multimeter inside also you can connect it to the computer uh, and what i like more the batteries are like normal batteries and i really love this i mean uh, let me open the, yeah, are normal batteries inside? Huh? Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, you can swap them, you can charge them, whatever. It, you know, it's just beautiful as a portable uh, oscilloscope. Now, the battery will get quite hot. The multimeter is taking a lot of current. But if you love your electronics, yeah, like usual, you have to bring some improvements to this one uh, because it, it will get hot. Trust me, this, this it will get hot. With 1.2 amps, that's a lot. 
Yeah. So let's open this and have a look inside and what improvement we can bring to this oscilloscope. And that's the oscilloscope inside. Pretty nice board, but like how I said, look, a proper hot. Like how I said, it will generate a lot of heat. Now let me open next. And that's the oscilloscope inside. Now I checked with the thermal camera. So already I mod this. You can see the thermal pad here. This is very important. Yeah, it's very hot. Uh, I'm going to show you actually the source of heat on this oscilloscope. No, the oscilloscope doesn't come with those thermal pads. So this is the, you know, the brain of the oscilloscope. So you have this chip, you have this chip. Those are getting hot, are getting very hot. So uh, here you have, uh, this is for charging, I believe. In order to try to get rid of the, the heat, uh, you can use some thermal pads. Let me tell you a secret here. Yeah? There has to be between us. Every time you use thermal pads on devices, and we've seen before I have around every device, my device, which I want to work longer, they have thermal pads. Yeah, increasing the 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 heatsink surface, you, the, you, the, your device it will have longer life. But the secret is, every time you use a thermal pad, the manufacturer is over the corner watching you. And you use the thermal pad and he will say, this motherfucker, he used a thermal pad, so now his device it will work longer than he's supposed to. <laughs> yeah okay now let's put it all back together let's make it clean and nice perfect so the heat sink uh, the thermal pad is here over that chip which is generating a lot a lot of heat here you have few power supplies which uh, are getting warm according with the thermal camera and here, yeah, a little bit thermal pad. You have a lot of space here for uh, for thermal pads. All good, so it's back together. Yeah, so that's my last toy. I mean, this one was missing from my from my shack. Okay, fantastic. But the main reason, I will say it one more time, the main reason is uh, actually the chipsets. And not only the chipsets. Let's say the chipset is reading the BIOS, but it's the laptop is still not doing what it's supposed to do. It's not coming on or it's not starting, whatever. Can be the chipset. But the fact actually is reading the BIOS can be an indication of a corrupt BIOS. Yeah, Doesn't mean if the BIOS is corrupt, the chipset it will not read the bios yeah so we can figure it out in the future when we have uh, you know motherboard repairs or you can check even the communication from uh, between the super io and uh, and the chipset very versatile we can, we can check a lot okay so i'll stop here hopefully you can, uh, enjoy this video i'm really really happy about the oscilloscope so thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you like the video, and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.